The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got two trading days left, including today, folks. You're talking about today, tomorrow, closed for Monday, January 1st with the New Year's holiday. We come back, we kick off 2024 on Tuesday, January 2nd. So we got today, we got tomorrow, we got live programming through Friday. And we have a somewhat slow market to pick things up. We were higher. Check out the price point overnight. I mean, quite an acceleration, right? End of the session on Friday into the 4 o'clock bar. You trade to 48.35 in the S&Ps. You make it above 48.41 in the overnight session. We've given back about 10 points. You're still basically almost at the highs that you were at yesterday afternoon. That was about a two-point range, 48.30 to 48.32. The S&Ps chopped around from that first acceleration at 1 o'clock all the way until about 2 o'clock. So a good hour you chopped around there. You traded above that area last night. We're back in that area. Basically, this morning at 48.29, just off by three points in the S&Ps on a daily basis. Absolutely remarkable. I remember talking about the 1 to 1 1.618 expansion, how that brought you up to the recent highs of 4,600 and change. And we're now approaching the 1 to 2618 expansion. And that is of the pullback we had in October. Just absolutely bonkers how this market, remarkable strength across the board. Back to a five-minute chart, NASDAQ 100. We make it to 17,165. We're selling off a bit in the last half hour or so. Still positive by 23 points. Dow off by 67 right now. That's about two-tenths percent, just under 37,000 after hitting 38,000 yesterday. 38,000, man. Some context on the Dow. We had a 32,400 price point on October 27th. In two months, you've had the Dow rise almost 6,000 points. 6,000 points, man. Russell off by 10. That's about half a percent. Russell with some extreme volatility recently. I mean, check out the Russell, right? Russell up by 450 points from where this thing was trading at October 27th. 450 points. That's almost 30%. The Russell is up. You have to be up about 480, maybe 500 to be at a 30% number. You talk about volatility. All right, we jump around. What else we got going on? Been quite a year for crypto. We've been talking about that recently. Crypto just kind of chopping around between this forty and $45,000 area. That's from where we traded December 4th. You got Bitcoin off about 800 bucks, 42755 Crude chopping around a bit. Let's make sure that's nothing important. No, it's not. We have crude off about 72 pennies, trading at 73.38. We were under $73 at 8 a.m. We jump around to gold. We almost got 2100 last night, $2,098.20. You chopped around there for the overnight session. We're now in negative by $8 right now on gold at 2084 Gold, of course, very dependent. What's happening with the dollar? Got a little bit of a spike. Dollar back above 101 after hitting 100. Look at this trend, though, man. My dad's been talking about some great calls. That's your daily. Put it on a weekly. Whew. Seems like we're destined to at least challenge that 100 area, and he's got some numbers below there, man. Yeah. 94 and change, 100 and change. I mean, we break through 100, right? Look at that acceleration, man. That was a one-way move in 2021 from 90 to 115. We've now chopped around a bit. Let's back it up even a little further. Whew, yeah. So, you know, 100 is going to be an important mark. You trade below 100 on the dollar index. I mean, look at this chart. You don't have to be a technician to see $90 comes at you pretty quickly if you break this area. And we're almost coming into that area already. The highs of 2017, 103.82. We were briefly above there on a longer-term basis. You did get above there briefly in the COVID. 
when it first hit March of 2020 before you traded down to 90 bucks. But you can see whether it's early 2015, late 2015, the spike we had going into 2017, where we were at the end of 2019, where we were at 2020. We're at that area. You break below 100. And who's to say we're not going to, right? The Fed hasn't even begun cutting yet. And already you got weakness in the dollar off the 115 area. But longer term, I mean, just for some context here, context is so important in many things in life, folks. For some context here, yes, we've backed off from 115, but we're sitting at 101. And 101 on this chart is the high point any time from 2002 back to at least 2014. No, it goes back to 2004, right? Point being, next stop's 90, man, in that dollar. And where does that mean yields are going if that's the next stop? Probably going lower if that's where we are on our way to 90. All right, what else we got going on? Let's check out some of the other currencies as we jump around because they are so important right now. Euro US dollar. I mean, remember when we were below par? It's not that long ago, folks, that the euro was at 160, 150, 150, 2011. We were at 140 in 2014 um, before we set kind of a new norm. And maybe 120 is probably that next area that would correlate somewhat to the dollar index being at 90 on our realm. Jump over to the dollar yen, an important one. Back to a short-term time frame. We trade down to 140.64 yesterday, a little bit of volatility. We're trading at 141 right now. You jump over to the volatility index, you get the VIX trading, basically uh, chopping around at 1250. All right, what do we have going on in the market? You got S&Ps off by three, a little bit of fundamental news, economic news this morning. We have initial jobless claims rising to 218,000, slightly more than estimated. should say slightly more, more than estimated, fair. But boy, when you're talking about, uh, I think it was six, 8,000 off, what was the estimate? Was it 210 or 212? 220, 210. I mean, you talk about a slightly more number. 8,000. So it comes in line. Continuing claims, 1.88 million. That comes in line as well, 1.88. You check them both out on the charts. Four-week average is in black. That's what I keep my eye on. It's a healthy number, man. Almost a historic low in terms of just uh, normal times. You you have a greater chop. Just Just the normal rotation of people that might be leaving their job for whatever reason, getting a new job, pursuing something else, changing careers, changing businesses, um, whatever it is. Now, the holiday season can probably be volatile as well, but nonetheless, and continuing claims, probably a much greater indicator in terms of the healthy economy. We saw that spike up from about 1.7 million up to about 1.8 million for a continuing claim. But check out for the last two, three months, we are just right where we were in terms of back in last April and still very healthy numbers for this type of economy and what the Fed has done, especially. <coughs> All right. And what they give credit to, of course, is that next Friday, OK, we get the government non-farm payrolls for December. They're looking for 170,000 increase in the payrolls. Consistent with resilient labor demand that has been key in powering the economy. So we get that on January 5th when we get back. But yeah, California, Missouri, and New Jersey led the advance while claims fell the most in Texas. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got 15 minutes to go until the opening bell. Market's choppy. We're going to take a look at some of the equities that are moving on this Thursday. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We jump over to Apple shares, S&P, negative by one. You get the NASDAQ 100, the only index right now in the positive. Apple gets a slight boost. We close at 193.15 yesterday. We're trading at 193.58, slightly positive with the NASDAQ 100. And yeah, pretty interesting news out there. They're going to resume sales of that watch as an appeals court lifts the ban. And I was listening to a little bit of commentary on Bloomberg last night, and they were talking about that if they lifted that ban, okay, and they – and they gave them a stay, that it means that they think that they may have, and I'm going to use the wrong verbiage here, but it made me feel like that they sided with Apple thinking they would be successful by allowing that. Um, and of course, you had the other company arguing against the interim stay of its order, saying in a Tuesday court, irreparable harm. So that's why they might not have issued that if they didn't think that Apple would be successful because there might be irreparable harm by allowing that to proceed. Um, nonetheless, pretty interesting as that saga goes on. I was talking about it recently, and it is a pretty cool feature of the Apple Watch, and I think you're going to see that type of stuff become much more prevalent. I was talking about yesterday. I use it myself, and it's very cool to see the longer-term trends, which you don't even realize longer term. Um, I love the ability to, we go to Bush Gardens, something like that. I'll turn on the tracker. You see how long you go. You see your heart rate. Um, I mean, you go to Bush Gardens, man, Disney, any of these parks. I mean, you go, what, skiing or something like that. You're getting a workout up in the Northeast in December 28th, January. But yeah, it is cool to see some of that tracking and it's useful data when you put it in that context, especially like I talked about my heart rate, I can see um, they're talking about blood oxygen, right? It, anyway, for what it's worth, nonetheless, they have a little bit of success. Apple's in the positive today. What else we got pulled up here? What was that? Oh, this one, we gotta talk about this one. So I was reading about this even early this morning on just a random car site that I had found this. I saw a post on social media about this vehicle 
this the kind of accolades that it has the the details of what it can do man so Xiaomi, I got to learn how to say this name because they're coming for the car industry and they got China behind them and it's going to be um, the tech companies first. They make phones. Now they're making cars. They're joining the crowded market. And yeah, they made a they're in a partnership with state owned Beijing Automotive. Well, state owned Beijing Automotive is not allowed to fail, folks. Remember that China, you're always dealing with variables. But um, they unveiled the company's first electric vehicle Thursday, declaring ambitions to be a top global car maker in 15 to 20 years. It's a long game, and you know what that can mean. That can mean some issues for the share, um, the stock price. So this thing's going to have 500-mile range on a single charge. I saw something like it can go 160 miles on like a five-minute charge, right? Remarkable speed, and they're looking to be – I mean it's a sleek car, man. They're looking to be the Porsche of the EV sector to that or that degree. And yeah, um, yeah, the five seat sedan is going to be powered by batteries from Chinese market leaders. Um, you're going to see more headlines like this, right? You always see it talked about. There's other competitors coming for Elon's lunch. And that doesn't mean that. Elon. I just typed in Elon. Uh, that doesn't mean that Tesla is going to trade lower, but some of the growth estimates are going to be very difficult when you have competitors coming on market, man. That is a sleek car. And they don't have the price out yet, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, see, so Beijing limits manufacturing permits to new market entrants, which means they have to partner with the state-owned Beijing Automotive to produce. Could you imagine if we didn't allow companies to be started in America unless you partnered up with either Joe Biden's America or Donald Trump's America as you were starting that company? That's the way it works in China, man. Um, But that's why they are so competitive in the same way, because they have the state government behind them. They're not going to fail. Uh, nonetheless, pay attention to that car, man, because it's a sleek one. And depending on the price camp, they are coming for that lunch. And there's a chart of that equity down to about 8 bucks. We're off of the lows, but still well off where you were in 2021. There's been a lot changing in China since uh, the last two, three years. That's for sure. All right, what else we got pulled up in terms of what's happening in this market? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm seeing this thing everywhere now, Affirm. Talk about some of the year-end trades, right? <sighs> Quite the acceleration, man. From 17 bucks up to 51, the market plows higher over that same time frame. This thing inks a deal with Walmart. And I tell you, I've been in the stores, man. I see it happening. I think it was either Walmart or Target. I'm pretty sure it was Walmart. And I'm walking past the TVs, and I'm looking at, you know, a $1,200 TV, something like that. I'm saying, geez, you really don't need to spend 1200 bucks on a TV. I guess there's differences, of course. But, boy, some of those TVs are so good at the lower end right now, it's hard to rationalize spending that much money. But then what happened was is I saw the monthly or $79 a month or something like that from a firm. So, man, I can see how people do that. You know, you can see how easy it is to get trapped into that. Um, so it's been quite a year for those companies, and it's only going to get better, I think, when you look at the deals that are in there with Walmart. And I'm just pulling up the fundamentals for this company before we jump away. Oh, that's a spy. I was going, what's going on right now? Okay, fifteen billion. That's quite a price tag, man. Fifty-one dollars for a firm. S and P's off by one right now. All right, let's jump around and see how some of the other Fang stocks are trading this morning. We jump to Apple. They're slightly in the positive as they're going to be selling some watches again. Amazon catches a slight lift right now. I mean, you jump over to yields, right? The trend has been higher price and lower yield. We're talking about a ten-year right now. Yeah, three point eight two. Three point eight two percent. Whew. I mean, what if I had told you, folks, 
on October 27th or October 23rd, the week of, that when the 10-year is above 5%, that we were going to be pushing 3.75% by the time we closed out 2023. And nonetheless, that's the move we've gotten. Now, with that in mind, realize that the 10-year, I was having a great conversation with Teddy Kegstat yesterday. We always archive all the interviews we do. If you want to check it out, head on over to our YouTube tip page. Head on over to YouTube. Just search TFNN. All of the segments, all of the videos, they're all under that section. And what Teddy was talking about is, you know, where's your – and I was talking about as well, the risk reward, right? I mean, how much further can you go when we've just went from over 5% on the 10-year to 3.75% almost? We're approaching. We're at 38 almost right now. That's almost a point and a quarter. Jeez, you got to go out 12 – months to get even with the markets thinking at least something like a like a point and a quarter so keep in mind how forward the market is getting and keep your eye on that data and make sure it's lining up because yes the fed's going to be able to cut but going lower from here is going to take more you know it's going to take more as in there's going to be more cuts that are going to have to come there's going to be more economic data that's going to have to hint to inflation working its way back to two percent and we still have some ways to go to get from three, three and a half down to that 2% number. No. Come back to the open, folks. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you catch a little bit of a bid as we are up one point in the S&P right now, backing out a bit. There's your acceleration. We dip lower at 845. These are 15-minute bars. Let's put it back to a five minutes so you can see right on the opening bell. Yeah, a little bit of a pop by a few points. We're positive by two in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100. Yeah, just reading. So NASDAQ 100, we're talking about maybe the best year since um, prior, just prior to the dot-com bubble. I mean, it's a cherry pick low, which is the crazy part of it. Excuse me, that's a daily. You put it on a weekly, and I say a cherry pick low as in, man, this thing just started on January 1st at 11,000, and we're finishing at 16,000. Okay, so when you talk about calendar years, it has been quite a calendar year. We almost make a session low, right? You make that low last October. We test that low, kind of the same area we came into from June of 2022, and then boom, January 1st, we race out of the gate. We're at 16,000 before you know it, and we're finishing above 17,000. It looks like at 17,153 in the NASDAQ 100. Remarkable. All right, let's talk a little bit of Red Sea. Yeah, crude, pretty remarkable. Uh, crude, yet another remarkable story of 2023. Half of the Red Sea container ship fleet avoids route after attacks. Another way to say that is half of the Red Sea container ships are still taking that route even after the attacks, which is remarkable in itself, right? If you divert around Africa 25% longer than using the Suez Canal, delays, costly insurance may raise prices on consumer good. Look for a slight boost, if anything, for inflation from that. Um, but yeah, 299 vessels with a combined capacity to carry 4.3 million containers have changed course or plan to. That's double the number from a week ago, and that is almost 20% of the entire global capacity. That's one out of five, man, right? So they're going to take 25% longer, uh, more costly. You're going to have higher prices as you deal with insurance, cost, energy, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's going to persist, man. So look at that. You can see exactly where they're going around Africa. You can see the Suez Canal. And that's where they're avoiding. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Yeah, so as of Wednesday, 364 vessels with a capacity for 5 million of the 20-foot container units are being rerouted, and that's up from 314 just on December 22nd. Whew, man. More than 100 attacks on the commercial ships in the past month. <laughs> yeah. So there was one just targeted Tuesday. 15 container vessels, 10 of them operated by Stayed on course or recently abandoned diversion planes in order to cross the Red Sea towards Suez. Whew. Imagine being on one of those, man. They better be getting some hazard pay, and that's saying the least. Talk about a moving target. Yeah, nonetheless, keep your eye on that one as this year persists. You know, there's a lot of people saying it won't be that big of a deal. But geopolitical risks sometimes. Um, just remember how often people tell you that it's not going to be a big deal and they turn out to be astronomically wrong there's too many examples to name right um talking about war attacks stuff like that yeah and to say the least right that somehow we can alleviate that problem with a small fix or that somehow that doesn't cause a huge disruption uh the graph says it all in terms of that disruption remember that one Remember all these ships going around this Suez Canal, and remember how that's going to add 25% time. It's going to take them longer. They're going to need more oil to make it through that area, more energy, et cetera, more time. Insurance might go up, et cetera. Yeah, not, a, not exactly a small issue as things wrap up. All right, let's see how some of the other FANG stocks are opening. We get the NASDAQ pulling back a bit. We were positive by about 40. We're only positive by 15 right now. You got Google shares slightly in the positive. We jump over to Amazon. They're up by five pennies. Apple, they're selling their watch again. So they're up a dollar, up by six tenths percent for Apple. Jump over to Microsoft shares, up by four tenths percent this morning. You jump over to Tesla. They've got a competitor on the block. They're still positive by a buck 89, up by seven tenths percent. I guess when they're out there saying 15 to 20 years for 
Xiaomi. I got to figure out how to say that one. Um, that's quite a time frame to catch up. Tesla shares up a buck sixty. Some of the other magnificent seven. Quite a year for Facebook. Meta. <laughs> Could we get it all back by the year end? That would take quite an acceleration in the last two trading days. I don't think we'll get $25 to the upside, but you're up another $2.50 at 360 Meta, one of the stories of the year for sure. One of the other stories of the year, NVIDIA, up another buck forty-six. Now, NVIDIA could close at a tick high. Yeah, we're only talking about, remember, 505 is the number. How about four ninety-nine ninety-nine? Price to sell for NVIDIA shares. That's last Wednesday. Uh, we're trading at 495 right now for NVIDIA. Quite the story from them as well. We check out Intel shares this morning. Down a bit, but it's been quite a year for Intel as well. We kick off the year at what? 25 bucks. We're finishing it at about $50. On the flip side of that, some of the laggers, Disney continuing to lag at $90, chopping around at near uh, recent lows, we'll call it. I mean, basically right down to the COVID lows, right? Look at where we are on Disney shares. 90 bucks. You're backing things all the way up to where you were in 2014. That's going to be a year. Yeah, you come into 2014 at 76 bucks, but you finished it at about 90. So you're talking about nine years. Disney's been chopping around at this price point. Tough year for Disney shares, to say the least. What else we got? Let's jump around to some other notable names. Salesforce. Quite a year for Salesforce. You kick off the year at 130. You're up more than 100% to 265 for Salesforce on their uh, acceleration. Some bang out earnings. Look at the last. I mean, look at Salesforce. March, they jump higher. May, a slight pullback. August, you deliver a surprise. And recently, you really crush it with the market. We're trading higher to 265 for Salesforce. Jump over to Uber. Let's put this back on a weekly for some context. Uber comes into the year at about 25. This recent acceleration from 41 up to 63.26. Yeah. Whew. Look at this. Uber might be closing at all-time highs. You're within 70 pennies all-time highs for Uber shares. That's been quite a run. All right, let's check out some of the banks. Look at this, man. J.P. Morgan. You know, an article pulled up yesterday just talking about J.P. Morgan's just dwarfing everybody right now. They're twice the size of Bank of America and Citi combined. And they, or they're, they're larger than their two biggest, Bank of America and Citi, I think it is, combined. Um, whether it's assets under management or market cap, they are just crushing it. Even J.P. Morgan, in a year when you were potentially going to see the cuts begin in terms of interest rates, all that extra interest income that they're making no what's happening you're pushing 170 you started the year off at about 130 and you are up from 135 just two months ago for jp morgan up today 31 pennies we jump over to bank of america shares they're up by nine pennies not quite the same year check it out basically flat for bank of america city barely in the positive this year as well not jp morgan man not under jamie diamond stay tuned folks be right back TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by two right now. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 17. Thanks to our man Dan, Dan in the den. Uh, folks, if you haven't joined the den, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Check it out. It's a dollar for the year. The holiday time. Great time to be in there, right? We're going to be off on this coming Monday. We've got a three-day weekend for the New Year's. Talking about that car company, X-I-A-O-M-I, -I, Xiaomi. Like she, like her, ow, like that hurts, and me, like me, myself, and I, Xiaomi. Thanks, Dan. Xiaomi. I remember that. Uh, boy, they're coming for that car company to deliver that car. It was a sleek car. It caught my eye, man. And that's what you got to do in this day and age. And the specs on that vehicle, look it up, okay? Um, they are some startling specs. And I'm sure Elon is paying attention as they are coming for Tesla. And this is going to be a lot of car companies coming for Tesla. And they're backed by the Chinese government in a partnership. So keep your eye on that one for sure. All right, what else we got going on? Uh, we've been talking crypto. It's been quite a year for crypto. One of the stories of 2023, to say the least. Now, Kathy Wood. Yeah, she's had quite a year as well as the NASDAQ has just plowed higher. We're trading at 54 right now. You pull up the three-year weekly. 29 was where we kicked off the year. We are well off where she was when the market was a little euphoric at 159. That's your three-year weekly. You back it up further than that. And as you can see, folks, okay, it's been quite a year for her. But all we are at is prior to COVID. That's all you're at in the arc. Man, I mean, there are some teledoc, right? There are some real, and this is where... This is where she's paid the price. Okay, this one comes to mind. I remember looking at this one. Boy, it's a simple story of why they should do well. Teladoc. COVID hits. Everyone's going to the doctor remotely. It seems like that's going to be the future no matter what, right? This thing charges higher to 300 She's all in. No, it trades down to $22. And even in the last year, you are actually below where you kicked off the year in a company like Teladoc trading at 2210 That's the reason why ARK is still so far below. You look at a company like Zoom. Okay, she was all in on them. 450. No, you're trading at 73 bucks. Yeah, well off 70. No, not even well off. Well off 58. Okay. But remember this when you see stuff like that in terms of, you know, the headline here. Um, I've seen she's had a stellar year. Okay. Now she's going into the pro shares Bitcoin and she's out of grayscale though for what it's worth. She had touted them as a top pick just last month. Did you hear that one? A top pick just last month, making sure, guess what? She's going to need buyers if she's the one selling into that market. She sold all of their remaining 2.25 million shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC.
this thing, of course, having quite a year. Uh, and I wonder if that was a lot of her selling at the end there or how that worked, right? But she sold all of that. And in the same day, she bought Bito, B-I-T-O, which is the pro shares, Bitcoin. And look it, there's all the volume there. Pretty remarkable how that happens, right? Uh, so for what it's worth, she saw something that saw, and if you're going to be trading in crypto, that's worth noting. I don't know the fundamentals of it, but it would seem like a ProShares ETF might be more trustworthy than a Bitcoin trust run by a Grayscale in terms of the ability for you to be regulated and get your money back. Um, she said to Bloomberg that Grayscale, out of an abundance of caution in case its conversion to an ETF is not approved, as that is priced in to a certain degree. Yeah, a little bit of volatility. But she's going to get some press because there are the headlines she'll get. The Internet ETF's up 103% for the year. NASDAQ's only up 55 And there you go. However... It fell 19% and 67% in 2001 and 2022. And here's the kicker about that, okay? When you go down 19% and then you go down 67% of big numbers, you need to make back more than 67 and 19 to get to where you were, right? Because if you have 100 grand and you lose 50 of it, so you lose 50%, what do you need to make to get your money back? You need to make a hundred percent back because now you got fifty grand. You got to double it to get back to the hundred, right? So she fell nineteen percent and then sixty-seven percent. She's made back a hundred percent, but as we've seen, we're well off, well off the highs on those equities. So remember some of those. Remember that she's talked about a five-year time horizon. I think it is. Might have been seven. Pretty sure it's five. And even ARC, okay, on a five-year basis, is barely positive. And that's from the end of 2018. And imagine the companies that she was participating in, most of them got huge boosts from a trend to online. All right, let's see how the market's open. And we got the NASDAQ pulling back a bit. S&P is barely in the positive right now. Amazon shares. Yeah, look at a little sell-off by a dollar to 153. Let's see how Apple's doing. They catch a little boost on their watch news probably. Microsoft barely in the positive right now. Google shares basically flat at 141. NVIDIA shares up a buck 77 so far. Meta shares up a buck 32. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up. Well, you know, this is interesting in terms of how it's everywhere. Let's see where we are. The watch is obviously a talked about topic, and um, the journal takes a different perspective here, talking about that they're ta chasing the ultimate health tracking watch, but it could take years in terms of what they are trying to put into that in addition to what they already have in there. And how they're going to have to deal with these types of battles going forward. So they won their temporary reprieve to resume sales. But they're going to deal with patent issues as you go forward, right? You're in a biomedical type space here. Um, and there's going to be a lot of battles and engineering hurdles, okay? And they're going to try and get everything in there. But Samsung already offers blood pressure monitoring in the gallery, Galaxy watches. Google's Fitbit is also experimenting with it in terms of blood pressure. So think about it. you got blood pressure, you got blood oxygen levels, you're gonna have probably have blood sugar. You're gonna be able to test at some point. You have your heart rate on there. It's it's the next way to tie into everything. And as I keep reiterating, as somebody that's seen the longer term trends and the benefit, it's pretty cool. Um, how that can exist. And it is cool getting your blood oxygen, getting your heart rate, just your heart rate sometimes. Tell a quick story. So I'm wearing my eye watch. This is good. So Tommy is almost three. February 2nd is his birthday. And so I'm wearing the eye watch, February 2nd, 2021, almost three years ago. I'm sitting outside in the hallway, ready to go in. And um, 
my heart rate is spiking, man, to like 140, 145. I still have the data. Think about that. I have my heart rate data as I was gearing up for the birth of my son. Simple stuff like that even as well. That's all tied in. Um, pretty remarkable how it works, man. A little bit of moment of anxiety, just kind of taking it in, right? Calm myself down. But yeah, stuff, stuff like that. And I can go back three years and look at that heart rate data if I want to. It's all stored. Think about it. Things as they go forward. Hey, folks, one more segment. The market's in positive territory. Now, NASDAQ SP positive. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. As I said, coming into that break, we're in positive territory, barely, but in positive territory. S&P futures positive by two, NASDAQ 100, we're positive by nine, Dow positive by 10, and the Russell still in slightly in the red off by four. We jump over to crude. Crude chopping around at $73 and change, 73.64. We jump over to that gold contract, gold trading at 2087. If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, check it out. Great time to do it with the type of volatility we have going on in yields. And the dollar index, gold, almost hit 2100 last night. The dollar, look at this, we're backing off yet again, 186. You jump over to the 10 year, actually lower by 10 ticks right now. What is that correlating to? That's 3.82, 3.82%. 3 um, almost 3.83, to be fair. Pretty remarkable. 
We finish it up with an interesting story from the journal, just talking about public colleges and the amount of money they're spending. Now, they chose Auburn. Not sure why they chose Auburn. Um, don't put them in the best light here in terms of the amount of money they're spending, how they're just transferring all the students. Uh, I'm going to post this in the Tiger's Den. If you got a chance to read it, folks, check it out. And what they talk about that in the late 2000s, Auburn was basically middle of the pack in terms of when it came to price students paid after scholarships at number 168. Where are they now? Since then, they spent so much money, they're at number four, one of the most expensive. And how they do it, they ramped up their total expenses from around the time I graduated college at $650 million to $1.5 billion. Well, they only take in 20% more students, so what do they have to do? They have to jack up the costs extremely high and go through this article if you get a chance, folks. The coolest part is what they talk about, where they're spending all this money. The amount of debt service going on is remarkable when you talk about general debt, athletics debt, housing debt. Remarkable. So we got a problem with the amount of money going into some of those colleges. And uh, I'm going to post that in the den, as I said. Take a look. But, yeah, just uh, and that's a public university, right? Folks, thanks so much for kicking your trading day off right here. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman's recording coming up. He did his program live at 8 o'clock in the morning. And guess what? I'll be back tomorrow morning for the final trading day of 2024. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.